And your Passover example goes against you. It's not for everyone. The sacrifice wasn't for everyone. It was if, for the priests, for the Levitical, if, uh, what do you say, if, uh, if, uh, ritual rites. And you have to be unblemished. Well. Exactly, yes, very good point. Yes. Unblemished, you have to be. If but Jesus, Jesus wasn't. If Jesus died at Passover, was bruised. and he's called our Passover lamb, he died for a... We'll find the answer in the original Passover in Exodus chapter 12. What is it you want to tell me about the Passover? The point is that the Passover informs us as to why Jesus had died on the cross. Because the Passover lamb, the blood had to be drained totally, applied to the outside of the door, so that the angel of death passed over and they were not subject to the judgment of God. Every other household was in Egypt was affected. Now that was written in scripture 12, 1300 years before Jesus died on the cross. So you're talking about a punishment by God, yes? So it's not about the death. But you're not talking about the death which every mortal experiences. You're talking about a certain punishment. Why won't you listen? I just listen. That's why I'm asking you this question. I'm saying we, we, we avoid the judgment of God. Yeah. Oh, you do? So but you won't be tested on, you won't be questioned on the day of judgment? Hold on. Why are you so defensive? Why didn't you listen? Because you are not actually educating me or anyone else about the truth which is in the Bible. Will you be judged on the day of judgment, David? That is not true. I'm explaining to you the Passover. Will you be judged on the day of judgment? People are not. Because somehow David is trying to imply that they will not be even questioned on the day of judgment. Every individual will be will be judged by the most just on the day of judgment. You won't be exempt from it, my friend. That is delusion if you believe that. Every individual will be judged by God Almighty. Please do not think that you won't be judged. Actually, the revelation of scripture is not that. There is a judgment at the beamer seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. The beamer seat of Christ is for those who belong to Christ, and it's not a, a judgment seat for, it's not a, a place of judgment. The beamer seat was a place in the um, Greek world where there was um, people who, arbitrated between laws okay that word is used of the place where christians come oh, 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 so, so, and are assessed Jesus teaches that judgment and assess yeah. assessment of their deeds on earth okay but there's not judgment in the terms of being judged whether to go to hell or to heaven really shall i show you but, where it is in the bible but, 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 let, me, but let me tell let me finish why are you so quick no oh, i'm listening <laughs> no, i'm listening no, no, because everything is. you say is against your bible no. i'm sorry to no. say this no it's because you won't don't want to understand i'm listening by the way i'm listening go on carry on so those who die yeah. and are owned by jesus go to the judgment seat which is called the beamer seat that seat is to do with rewards not eternal destiny okay Okay, here it is. And the white throne judgment, Wait, but, Revelation chapter. 20. Did everyone hear him that you won't be judged yeah. for your deeds? Yeah, yeah. On the earth? Let's see what the Bible says. Yeah. This is the third time I've caught you out from basically I, misquoting I know, the Bible. But I'm going to have to explain to you again what, what I'm saying. There is oh. a distinction between the judgment of Christians and believers. Okay. Yeah. The Christians and, and the believers. And the judge. Well, and the judge. Not believers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the judgment. Somehow, I don't think he thinks the believers are believers or other Christians, actually. And are you distinguishing between the believers and their Christians? Or was that some mispronunciation? Well, what happens to Abraham? Old Testament. Can you please tell me? Old Will you be judged for your deeds or not? Old Testament. No, David, says, David. No, he says no. He's please stop beating around the bush and answer a simple question. Will no. you be judged on the day of judgment for your deeds listen, in this world? Listen, you go home and read. No, no, answer my question. Listen, listen, listen. I've listen, been listening listen, to you, listen, listen, listen. but you're not answering any we of my are, questions. We are judged on the basis of assessment for reward. The, 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 the judgment before the white throne in Revelation chapter 20. Will you be judged by God? For your deeds on this earth, yes or no? My deeds are under the blood of Christ, but they are, I do appear with the, before the beamer seat of Christ to be judged on the basis. You read 1 Corinthians. So you'll be judged? 
Thank you very much. Finally, you see. That, no. By the way, stop hitting me. I know you're angry. I know you're triggered. I'm not. Okay. But the thing is, what about this? Word? Hold on, hold on. Let me read this. Let me read your Bible. Peter one seventeen. He will get be against you. A judge can mean appraisal, scrutiny. First Peter. It does not mean. It's very clear. Yeah. Don't worry. Let me read it for you. I know. I don't. I don't know why you're so reluctant for me to read the Bible. It's your book. The book from God. Okay. It says here. Since you call on a father, Where who are you reading from? Uh, yes. 1 Peter 1 17. That's the New Testament? Yeah? yeah okay. No, no, no. It says here, since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, impartial. yes? <laughs> Live on your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. Each person's work. Okay? That is your deeds. Yes. And who judges that? God. The father. Yes, it says the father here. Since you call on the father who judges each person's work impartially. So on that day, on the day of judgment, God is going to judge you. God is going to judge me. God is going to judge everyone impartially. Yes, you, my friend, listen, you are not exempted. Whether the blood of Jesus is on you or not, you are not exempted. But on that day, you know who else will judge? Guess what? It is not just Jesus who is going to judge. It's not just the father who is going to judge. But it's even... The 12 tribes of Israel will be judged by the 12 disciples of Jesus. Now you see, unless you're going to tell me those people are gods as well, because you see, for me as a Muslim, the day of judgment, the Yawm al-Qiyamah, the only judge on that day will be Allah, the Supreme God, yeah. the God of everyone. Yeah. He'll be the only judge. But unfortunately, in your belief, it is also the disciples of Jesus who will judge the 12 okay, tribes of Israel. Will you let me answer that? Yeah, go on. And I, I need to go, so you let me answer this. Fair enough, go on. And probably we can carry on next time. So. Okay, please answer so, the questions. I will ask you were, as well. We're talking about being judged. Yeah. Okay? Now, all humanity, but those who are, born, um, who are outside Christ, are judged at the white throne judgment at the end of the millennial reign of Christ. Okay? What are you trying to say? But, are you judged or not? But, but, but listen. In one, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it talks about the judgment seat of Christ. It's a, the word is there, bema seat. So we will understand that if we understand what the Greek word bema means. What does it mean? The bema seat was a place where if there were disputes in a, a Greco-Roman city, mm. it would be brought before... Oh, so it's an arbitration? Arbitration. Okay. Good. So judgment... Just judgment is not arbitration. We're, we're, it's not like God is going to say between two parties, who is the one who is the winner? No. On the judgment day, your deeds, like it says in that chapter, oh, 1 Peter 1 17, are, it says are, every deed of yours will be judged. There won't be an arbitration. In fact, you will be the only person standing in front of God when he's judging you. And you'll be judged individually. Then it'll, then it'll be next, another person will be judged. Listen. Similarly, every single Listen. individual will be judged Listen. unjustly. Listen. Sorry, just uh, by, uh, justly in an impartial way. You didn't let me finish. You were talking about all, arbitration. All I'm, Two right, different things. you raised the issue of arbitration. And you agreed with me. Which, that is what I it know, means. But the point is the word judgment has many meanings. You can judge something to appraise it, to scrutinize it. And they assume, they, sorry, you, assume that judgment means... What? God... Judging you. Pointing his finger and saying, right, you have had it. Yes, 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 God will be judging you. There's, there's a judgment. If you, if you go to see a house because you want to buy it, you go there to evaluate it. You see so many words. So listen. He wants to avoid, he wants to avoid the term judgment. judgment. Everything else he wants to put in. Listen, I want to wrap up. So let me just say this. In John chapter 5, judgment is passed from the Father to Jesus. You read it. And then in John chapter 12. And then to the disciples? In John chapter 12, the judgment, judgment yeah. it's like God is reluctant to judge. He passes judgment. Among them as God is reluctant to judge. Where does he say that in the Bible? It says the opposite. God is always judging impartially. Please stop. No, you know, this is what I've seen from the Pharisees in the Bible. They twist the verses, they twist the passages. Just like John 17, 3 says, only the Father is God. He twisted it and he says, it means Jesus is God. This is the works of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Not, not the true righteous people. Unlike you, 
No, hash By the way, see hash what he says about I the... I need to go. Yeah, yeah, sure. So you, you can go. You promised, I'm not holding you against you. You promised me that I could finish. Yeah, but you're talking about arbitration. In John, well, I'm, I'm no, saying no, judgment well. means more than you want to make it mean. No, you're no, twisting listen, the meaning want, of judgment. I need to make progress. Okay, go on. I need go on. Make, make your statement. So in John chapter 5, yeah. judgment, Jesus said, the ju judgment was passed from Father to Jesus. And from Jesus? And from Jesus to who? Twelve. No, it was passed from Jesus to the very word of God. So we are what about the twelve disciples? So, the, so what we are to judge ourselves. Who is the very word of God? So what I thought are, that was Jesus so, as well. So yeah. so what we are to judge ourselves today by right. is the word of God. Yeah, but you're the one who doesn't follow it, do unfortunately. It. Jesus is one saying you are <laughs> so, the true God. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's not referring to himself. You you are are David, God. have you heard of this phrase? So the, Practice no, what you preach. So the point is this when he reads from from the Bible, from, you reject from, it. From Peter. Yeah, Peter. 1 yeah. Peter 1 we, I, David Norris, today am um, going to be judged by the Word of God and my application of the Word of God before the Bema Seat of Christ when I meet him. Your deeds will be judged, but, right? Your deeds will be that, judged. Those are the, 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 um, the things done in the flesh are the straw, the hay, talked about in, 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 in 1 Corinthians 3, as opposed to the gold, the silver, that is the, the good deeds that have been wrought in us in character after we've been saved. Can I, can I, can I ask you something, David? You know, well, quickly, but you, yeah. get, you get the point. I get the point. Get the um, point. Let me ask you this. A Christian, you said a, a Christian uh, is subject to judging himself. What, what, one second, one second. Let me finish because he has to go. So, David, you're telling me that you will be judged by God on the day of judgment. What is the point? Wait, wait. What is the point of the blood of Jesus if you're just going to be judged anyway? I have answered I, your question. I honestly don't see the I point. Exactly if a Christian is, his sins are washed away by God, by the uh, sorry, by the death of you're Jesus not, Christ. You're not listening. Then what no, is the I point? What is the point? I, I what did I say? What is the point of believing in Jesus? Exactly. That's I what I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah. We're we'll we'll coming to that. Can I let it? Yeah. After after his statement. Let me finish with him, and then I'll come to you. So David, you will still be judged after the shedding of blood of Jesus. What's the point? The day of judgment. We have to be very careful. We know what we're, we're talking about. I am not talking about the white throne judgment in which all people are judged in total history, including you who do not know, know who do not know Christ. Christians do not appear appear before the. But why are you talking about this other judgment? What about the judgment I mentioned in 1 Peter 1:17, where the Father will judge you? Who is Peter writing to? Regardless. Who is Peter yeah. Do you not understand his message? The important thing is his message. By the way, you, are, you, are you a born again Christian? No, no. David, David, are you a born again Christian? Some parts of scripture you have to realize they are applying to certain people. No, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. This is called cherry picking. Listen, That's exactly listen. what so, Jericho is all about. Yeah, please do. When I read a passage about uh, wives, I'm having a discussion here. Okay, we don't believe in this. Well, well not really. I mean, you do David, have a point, but it David, sort of David, contradicts David, a little bit. David, are you? It takes a whole argument a little bit. Are you? Are you a born again Christian? Yes. Okay. What does it say about the born again in the Bible? Shall yeah, I just read yeah, it yeah, and tell me if you agree with it? It I says here. Yeah. Are you introducing another topic? No, no. Same topic. Same talking about the. How am I going to catch my train? Two minutes. One, actually, it'll take less than two minutes. It'll be less than one minute. It says here in 1 John chapter 3, uh, verses 4 to 10. It says here, no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what, the, what is right is not God's child nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Let me ask you this, David. Do you still sin after being born again? Are you introducing a new topic? No. Yes, you no, are. No, it's the same. You are. Do you still believe? So you is that what the sin? Still I the same? I need to go. Of course, you have to go I now. Need to go. Yes, I scared. needed to go one you are hour ago. No. You are allowed to well, scare. Right to yes, I am. Yeah. The point is. Bye-bye. Yes, I am. Bye. The point is, okay. the point is Hashan, I'm going to finish here. I thought you were going. Can you please answer this before you finish? I'm going to answer you. Okay? Because no, according to no, this, a born-again person hang on, cannot sin. Hang on. Unless you're going to be called the children of the devil. Because the children of the devil continue sinning. Yeah. But we know that every Christian who is a born-again Christian continues sinning even after they have become born again. But your Bible says, this is how we know the children of the God 
are who the children of and for, who are the children of the devil are. So anyone like David, like like David, who continues sinning as a born again Christian, yeah. Yeah. is called a children the children of the devil according to your Bible. Yes, yes. So it's up to you to uh, to make you sense of that. You will not go ahead in anything. No, my no, friend. Okay, we're not going to add nothing. By the way, you know, have you noticed one thing? What I said. I substantiated from the Bible. Yes, exactly. What David yes. said, yes. it is all yes. kind of just speculations. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Nothing is backed exactly. up by the Bible. You go and find out about the Passover. What yeah, I told you about the Passover already. Why did Jesus? I thought you had a train to catch. I do. So, yeah. uh, so, so why, why didn't you answer the one I asked you? Because I want to bring this to a conclusion. Conclusion. Because we have. In other words, how was last word? We have just well. We have discussed judgment, yes. the beamer seat, New board, the, white throne, the white throne judgment. I've tried to make a distinction between the two. We can explore that next time. In fact, you brought up this distinction of another judgment when I told you already in 1 Peter 1.17, God says he judges everyone's yes. works. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Very clearly he says, Judges everyone's works. Will you explain to me how the beam, impartially? Will you will you explain to me how the beamer seat judgment? Why well, bringing the beamer seat? Where, beamer seat, you know. Where, when you're talking about arbitration where, and judgment, where, they're two different things. No, no, no. And arbitration is not a judgment of your deeds. Do you no, want to an arbitration can be if two people are fighting. You appoint a judge between them, yeah. which both parties agree with to arbitrate the, uh, yes. the argument, the, the disagreements that they're having. Logic. The reason you always bring in something unrelated to the topic yeah. is because so no. you can then waffle on about no. it. Yes. No, no, no. By the way, it won't work no. with me at least. No, because you're trying to make everything that is from the Bible. Simple. You're trying to make it. What's wrong with making simple. everything simple? Simple, yeah. What's yeah, simple? It makes yeah. It easy, because yeah. if you make it God too not, simple, it's not using the Bible. Forget. God is not. Maybe you should look up Occam's razor. Yeah. It's the not author of confusion. God is not author of confusion. Is, exactly, yeah. He's one of the only. Not one of three, not so simple. Okay. Anyway, anyway, David, what very nice speaking to you. I don't want you to miss your train. Yeah. So maybe we can continue next time. Next week, next week. Okay? But trust me, next time, please use your Bible to substantiate what I'm, you say, rather than just speculating about things. Hashem says trust him. I'm no, I said trust the Bible. I said, trust the Bible. You said, trust me. Yeah, trust me I'm because I quoted to, the Bible. I'm going to trust. No, your interpretation is false. No, it's not. It's you mean, not okay, go and look up John 17 3 and let's see whose interpretation I is right. Yours or mine? David. What about 17.5? What chain, about 17.5? Chain, chain. What about I knew you would like to work 17.5. 17.4 says his work is complete. This is before the crucifixion. Yes. Are you telling me Jesus' work is complete before the crucifixion? Yes, he Oops, he didn't read that, that bit. Go home and homework. Go home and read it. And read 25. Uh, oh yeah. Now he's going to do five because five. the four also doesn't make sense verse to him. You see, everything that he has mentioned, unfortunately, it backfires on you. Yes. No, it does. Yes. No. Yeah. And you know what? I haven't even used the Quran yet. I've only used the Bible so far. You will nod at anything. Okay. Well, as long as you. Fair, okay, so anyway, David, very nice talking oh, to you. 